Then there's just plain denial. I don't know if you've ever had that happen to you, but I have like summarily defeated liberals. I'm sure you have. You have pointed out the data. You have proven them wrong time and time again. And you're wrong. No, I'm not defeated. I'm not done. Anyone have that happen with you? No? Yes? Okay. Again, delusional. Right? Key word today, delusional. They don't realize reality that they're losing all their limbs and arms and the battle is over. Sometimes you just got to know when to throw in the towel. You're not going to convince these people. And the only thing that's really going to convince them is when they get their reality, like they actually get national health care, they actually get socialism, they get whatever they want. They're like, oh, wow, yeah, this really isn't great. This is that, you're not going to convince them. So don't waste your time. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's gonna, you're you're going to die soon, and uh, you shouldn't waste your time. Now, measures that can be taken for us to engage in kind of debate. All right? One, understand you're dealing with an uninformed, ignorant child. All right? This is not like... Two equals going at it, all right? You are talking to someone who's less educated, less informed, probably even misinformed, uh, and it's going to be more of a lecture teacher educating the student. And that's usually a very good way to engage, saying, look, you're, in, you're misinformed. You, 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 you're missing something. I'm, I'm sure you're, you're trying, and that's good and honorable that you're really trying, but you're misinformed. Let me explain to you. And that's where the vast majority of debates I've had, I have to deprogram them, say, okay, here's where you're wrong. Here's the data to prove, where you're, here's the data to prove you're wrong. And then here's how it really works in the real world. Okay? Uh, so try that. Do not be intimidated, though. That's the key thing. Do not be intimidated. A lot of people, oh, gosh. No. Just... If, as long as you got the data, as long as you got truth on your side, you're going to win. Very simple. One topic at a time. Again, they love to change topics. Don't change topics because you'll forget that one. They'll move on to they'll not solve that one, so forth and so on. If you can just get them on one topic, at least that shoots one hole into their philosophy, and now they got to really start thinking about it because it's not just each theory stands on its own. They're integrated. If you can prove them wrong on corporate taxes, they're going to have to think about uh, personal taxes. They're going to think about government spending, so forth and so on. Okay, pick your topics wisely. Choose them that are resolvable. It is pointless to try and debate abortion, legalization of drugs, or gay marriage. It's a it's an opinion. All right. Economics also is your largest problem facing the nation right now. Forget gay marriage, whether people are gay and they get married or not. That's really inconsequential to our future right now. Okay. What you got to do is focus on economics or things that can be proven with empirical data. Right? Uh, <clears throat> secondly, you got to do it quickly. You got maybe five minutes to convince them. And with the internet, this has made things a lot better. You go online, find everything and anything, bam, like that. Right? So, and especially with internet being more available on the phones, coffee shops, wherever you name it, you should be able to find, hey, let's go on the computer and take a look and find it out. But you got to be able to find that data quickly. Know your statistics. Right? This comes with practice and more studying. Again, we don't want to feel, we want to know. But more importantly, know where to find them. Right? I have a lot of data and statistics. And what will happen? What would happen? Someone says, well, GDP growth goes up with government spending. I say, no, you're wrong. They say, really, how? What do I have to do now? I have, to be go I have to not only be able to go on the internet, I have to know exactly where I have to find that data, OECD under the statistics section, economic projections. The faster you can go, the better you can be. Betting, this is a brilliant tactic. Understand there is no financial cost with being ignorant. You can have ignorant, dumb views all you want. It doesn't cost you anything. But if you bet a socialist, say, I bet you you're wrong, now you've attached a financial cost with them being ignorant. Now, what's going to happen is this. You will make the bet. They're going to balk. Well, I don't know, and you can go to them. Oh, come on, you think you know everything and, and you're not even willing to bet 20 bucks? Come on, you vote this way, you're not even, is your vote only worth 20 bucks? If you can't, you know, come on. They'll take the bet. You're going to prove them wrong. They're gonna resort to conspiracy theory, tainted data, so forth and so on. So here's what you have to do, you have to structure your bet. One, you have to pick a provable topic that you know the answer to and can find the data quickly, All right? Don't bet, well, I, I think Cuba sucks. Well, that's not a structured bet. You got to, something specific. The income per capita is less than the Cayman Islands. That's what you got to do. Agree upon the bet and the data source. That's key. I say if we go to the Federal Reserve, the unemployment rate is 6% or higher. Okay, we go to the Federal Reserve. Agree upon the parameters. Otherwise, I'll say you can't say high or low. 
they'll say, well, 10% isn't that high. Like in Tunisia, they have 30% unemployment. So, you know, the U.S. 10% unemployment. No, for the U.S., 10% unemployment is pretty high. All right. So you got to, because they'll try and wiggle out. I've done it before. They'll try and squirm the way out. You have got to lock them down, paint them in a quarter. And once you agree upon all the very precise, specific things that need to be done, you have them. Now, here's the other thing with betting. You should go for the kill. And the reason why is it exposes how hypocritical and unfounded their ideology is. We are in a democracy or republic. The government is created by the people. Therefore, the people have a responsibility to the nation, a stewardship of democracy that we have to become educated, we have to become informed, so that when we vote, we vote in the right people. But if you're flowers and puppies and protests and let's do some pot and talk about acorn, you're not being a good steward. And if you cannot win the bet, a $100 bet, $20 bet, whatever it is, then your vote isn't worth that much. If you've lost the bet, your vote is worth less. Because obviously you're so uninformed, you shouldn't be in charge. You shouldn't be a steward of democracy. You're ignorant, you're uneducated, right? And that you gotta drive home. You should say verbatim, you shouldn't have the right to vote. And that's not being cruel, that's not being harsh, that's being reality. Because we can go back to those acorn girls, do you want them in charge? No, all right? Otherwise, imagine the kind of policy that would be implemented, free food, and, and we'll pay for nationalized health care without taxing. All right, statistics are your best friend. This is where you ultimately are going to prove one economic system does better than the other. Statistics are the numerical reality of the economy, right? It's one thing to have logic, it's one thing to have philosophy, it's one thing to have uh, uh, morality. It's another thing is whether it's actually true or not, and here is where you're going to prove it. One, here's government spending, federal government expenditures as a percentage of GDP. You see, here's World War I, a crisis. Here's World War II, a crisis. Here's Barack Obama going on a spending binge. Okay? This is the highest amount of federal government spending we've ever had uh, in the history of the United States that wasn't a time of war. Okay? So this gives you perspective when they say, we're just not spending enough. Guess what, people? We only can spend twice the amount that we're currently spending now. Ask a liberal, ask a leftist, well, how much more do you need? How much is enough? They'll say, oh, two or three times. Well, guess what? That's communism, 100% taxation rate. No one's going to work. All right? There are limited funds. Another one is total government spending. Understand this is federal government. Does not include state, local, county, sales, fishing, license, tax, all that. So you take total government spending as a percentage of GDP, not just national, but local, and we're already at about a 43% rate. Right. Now, the reason I bring up spending as a percentage of GDP is that this is the measure by which we determine whether or not we're socialist or not. Some people say you should take uh, revenue, but revenue that the, you only pay back what you borrow with more tax revenue. So you got you to tax in the future to pay for borrowed spending. In any case, the accurate measure of your overall tax rate is spending as a percent of GDP, because GDP is all we make. It's our total revenue divided by total spending. All right? <clears throat> so it gives you this overall tax rate. And the reason I bring this up is because we are socialists. All right? The Democrats aren't Democrats. They are socialists. Proven, 46, I don't know what you'd call it, but a 43% tax rate, that's pretty socialist to me. Socialist President Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, the socialist, not because it's a pejorative, not because it's, you're trying to insult them, you're telling them because that's what they are. And that data there proves it, okay? Here, this data is a little bit dated, I know it's a little bit different, but I wanna show you Canada, which we presume to be socialist, Norway, which we presume to be socialist, have the exact same, or roughly the exact same spending. And as you notice, we've gone up more to 41 with the projections, uh, but this is in a slightly older chart. The larger point splitting hairs, we already have the same level of spending as the socialist countries. We are socialist. Welcome to the United Soviet States of America. All right, the federal budget. Most of your arguments are gonna be on a national scale. You must know the federal budget. You'd be amazed how many people do not know what the federal budget is. Here it is, 21% Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, which one's this? Unemployment, welfare, interest, Department of Defense, global war on terror. Before the war on terror, defense was actually smaller than Social Security. Now, we can go through the details, but I simplified it here. 
Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, welfare, interest, defense, health and human services, education, actual governing departments. 12% of the federal budget is actually spent on government. I mean, now defense as well, but actual governing of the nations. If you look at, though, the majority, you're going to see that the vast majority, not the vast majority, but the majority of our federal budget is spent on income transfers. Welfare, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. You can throw health and human services and education in there if you want. Right? What this brings up the point, aside from the fact that you should know the federal budget, it also points out that the federal government is not primarily an institution of governance. It is first and foremost an institu uh, institution of wealth transfers. It transfers income. That's what it does. The reason why is that you can bribe these people to vote for you. If you just vote for me, I'll give you unicorns, puppies, flowers, chocolates, and Jennifer Aniston on rollerblades. OK? 